Oxyhemoglobin Dissociation Curve Introduction The oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve illustrates the relationship between the partial pressure of oxygen in the blood and the number of oxygen molecules bound to hemoglobin. When oxygen is bound to hemoglobin, the resulting molecule changes conformation. This new conformation is referred to as oxyhemoglobin. One hemoglobin molecule can carry up to four molecules of oxygen. The point on the curve at which hemoglobin is 50% saturated with oxygen is called the P50, and it's 27 milliliters of mercury in normal adults. The P50 is used when discussing how the oxygen dissociation curve shifts based on physiologic factors. The poorly oxygenated blood, or venous blood, returns to the lungs. The hemoglobin readily binds oxygen to achieve a high oxygen saturation. Going up the curve as the partial pressure of oxygen increases and oxygen is bound to hemoglobin. As it travels through arteries that have a relatively high partial pressure of oxygen, the vast majority of oxygen remains bound, the flat part of the curve. This allows for transport of oxygen in the arterial system. When oxyhemoglobin arrives at peripheral tissues that have a low partial pressure of oxygen, the oxygen is readily unloaded, going down the curve as the partial pressure of oxygen drops and oxygen is released from the hemoglobin. Oxygen is now dissolved in the blood and ready to be diffused into tissues for aerobic metabolism. Factors affecting the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen. Three important conditions affect the oxygen-hemoglobin dissociation curve the pH, the temperature, and the concentration of 2,3-diphosphoglycerate. Effect of pH Changes in blood hydrogen ion concentration, pH, shift the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve. An increase in carbon dioxide production by tissue and its release into blood results in the generation of hydrogen ions and a decrease in pH. This shifts the dissociation curve to the right, which has a beneficial effect by aiding in the release of oxygen from hemoglobin for diffusion into tissues. The shift to the right in the dissociation curve is due to the decrease in pH and to a direct effect of carbon dioxide on hemoglobin. Conversely, as blood passes through the lungs, carbon dioxide is exhaled, which results in an increase in pH, which in turn causes the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve to shift to the left. This effect of carbon dioxide on the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen is known as the Bohr effect, and it serves to enhance oxygen uptake in the lungs and delivery of oxygen to tissues. Effect of temperature An increase in body temperature, as occurs during exercise or maybe in fever, shifts the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve to the right and enables more oxygen to be released to tissues, where it's needed because the demand increases. During cold weather, a decrease in body temperature, especially in the extremities, lips, fingers, toes, and ears, shifts the oxygen dissociation curve to the left, higher hemoglobin affinity. In this instance, partial pressure of oxygen in the arterial blood may be normal, but release of oxygen in these extremities is not facilitated. Effect of 2,3-diphosphoglycerate 2,3-diphosphoglycerate is an intermediate product of formed in red blood cells during glycolysis and made by tissue in response to a low pH and low oxygen environment. When 2,3-diphosphoglycerate binds, hemoglobin is stabilized in its low oxygen affinity state, causing oxygen to dissociate. The affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen decreases as 2,3-diphosphoglycerate levels increase, resulting in a rightward shift of the dissociation curve. Conditions that increase 2,3-diphosphoglycerate include hypoxia, decreased HGB, and increased pH. Decreased levels of 2,3-diphosphoglycerate are observed in stored blood samples and thus may present a problem to transfusion recipients because of the greater affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen, which inhibits the unloading of oxygen to tissues. Fetal hemoglobin has reduced binding to intracellular 2,3-diphosphoglycerate, which results in a left-sided shift of the oxygen-hemoglobin dissociation curve. Response to high altitude In acute states, the immediate response to high altitude is hyperventilation in response to lower inspired oxygen, lower atmospheric pressure, which causes an increased pH and leads to respiratory alkalosis and develops high-altitude sickness with the manifestations of headache, lightheadedness, 
nausea, fatigue, sleep disturbance. At first, this would cause a left shift in the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve, releasing less oxygen to the tissues. Over the following two to four days, there is an increase in the synthesis of 2,3-biphosphoglycerate. This stabilizes T-hemoglobin, deoxy, taut, at the expense of the R, oxy form. The result is more efficient offloading of oxygen at the tissues. Therefore, the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curves would move rightward. In chronic states, chronic increase in ventilation due to chronic hypoxia causes an increase in erythropoietin synthesis by cortical interstitial cells and kidneys, increase in hemonocrit and hemoglobin. Chronic hypoxia stimulates the synthesis of 2,3-biphosphoglycerate in red blood cells, where it binds the hemoglobin to unload oxygen from hemoglobin to the peripheral tissues and causes a rightward shift of the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve. Cellular changes in chronic hypoxic conditions will increase mitochondria. Increase in renal excretion of bicarbonate is seen in chronic hypoxic conditions to compensate for respiratory alkalosis, can augment with acetazolamide. Chronic hypoxia can lead to pulmonary vasoconstriction, which increases pulmonary vascular resistance, causes pulmonary hypertension, leading to right ventricular hypertrophy, and finally, right heart failure. Exposure to carbon monoxide Carbon monoxide binds to the heme group of the hemoglobin molecule at the same site as oxygen and forms carboxyhemoglobin, causing a left shift in the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve. The affinity of carbon monoxide for hemoglobin is about 240 times greater than it is for oxygen. This explains that carbon monoxide outcompetes oxygen for hemoglobin binding. This means the oxygen content of the blood is drastically reduced because there are fewer hemoglobin binding sites for oxygen to bind to. As mentioned earlier, carboxyhemoglobin has a higher affinity for binding to oxygen. This means that at a given partial pressure of oxygen, more oxygen remains bound to hemoglobin and less is released to the tissues. The oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve is shifted to the left and the P50 is decreased. Because of the decreased oxygen content and reduced oxygen release, individuals with carbon monoxide poisoning have inadequate oxygen in their tissues. It causes clinical manifestations such as headache, dizziness, nausea, or vomiting, and malaise. They may also be described as having sherry red skin and lips due to a high concentration of saturated hemoglobin, which appears as red. Individuals with carbon monoxide poisoning must be immediately assessed and stabilized. Initial management usually involves the administration of 100% oxygen therapy. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy, though controversial, is often used for individuals with very low oxygen levels when 100% oxygen therapy fails. Clinical link. Most of the individuals with carbon monoxide poisoning will have a normally measured oxygen saturation. As mentioned earlier, the binding of oxygen to hemoglobin changes its conformation. Similarly, the binding of carbon monoxide to hemoglobin also changes its conformation. A basic pulse oximeter can detect only the percentage of hemoglobin that is in the bound conformation. Pulse oximetry cannot tell the difference between hemoglobin bound to oxygen and hemoglobin bound to carbon monoxide. Myoglobin An interesting contrast to hemoglobin is myoglobin, an iron-containing pigment found in skeletal muscle. Myoglobin resembles hemoglobin but binds one rather than four moles of oxygen per mole protein. Myoglobin's main function is to store oxygen for skeletal muscles to use. The lack of cooperative binding is reflected in the myoglobin dissociation curve, a rectangular hyperbola rather than the sigmoid curve observed for hemoglobin. Additionally, the leftward shift of the myoglobin oxygen binding curve when compared with hemoglobin demonstrates a higher affinity for oxygen and thus promotes a favorable transfer of oxygen from hemoglobin in the blood. The steepness of the myoglobin curve also shows that oxygen is released only at a low partial pressure of oxygen values, for example, during exercise. The myoglobin content is greatest in muscles specialized for sustained contraction. The muscle blood supply is compressed during such contractions, and myoglobin can continue to provide oxygen under reduced blood flow and or reduced partial pressure of oxygen in the blood.
That's all for the video. We'll see you next time.